I'm Adam Noonan. We're here with Lenses for our weekly Kafka live stream. And today we'll be talking about syncing data from Kafka to S3, which will be used in consumption to a data lake, probably for historical analysis. Um, we are doing these every week, every Thursday for 30 minutes. Um, so be sure to join and find out some tips and tricks to make working with Kafka and event-driven architecture that much easier. Um, so today we're talking about syncing to S3 from Kafka for consumption into a data lake. Next week, we'll be wrapping up the year with creating dead letter queues and working with DL queues in Kafka using our take on SQL stream processing. Then we'll be starting off the new year with a new data mesh pattern that we've been working with and consulting customers on for event-driven architectures. And that will lead into feeding Gen AI apps with streaming data, something everybody's talking about and we're no different. So be sure to tune in and learn best practices working with Kafka and streaming data for AI workloads. Again, I'm Adam Noonan. I'm a sales engineer here at Lenses. Joining me today is Matthias, a professional services consultant here at Lenses. He's going to be walking us through a demo of some S3 sync connector configurations and ideal workloads for those configs. Also in the chat and online today is Stefano, Director of Engineering, Adamos, who heads product, and Andrew and Guillaume, our CTO and CEO as well. So full team here. Uh, be sure to, to chime in with the chat or the, the Q&A session at the end here with any questions about Kafka, we can help answer today. And today we'll be talking about and demonstrating our new and improved Lenses S3 sync connector. There's a complimentary source connector as well, both of which are fully open sourced under the Apache 2 license. So they're yours to install, mess around with, make your own. And then we also provide enterprise support as well. So you can be sure that with your production workloads, you can use this software and it'll be supported with advanced SLAs. And all of this is wrapped into our fantastic developer experience for your developers working with event-driven architecture uh, platform we call Lenses. And today we'll be talking about syncing to our S3 data lake. Uh, top of mind is our partition strategies when we're syncing to S3. And so what do we mean by partition strategies in S3? Obviously, we have Kafka itself, which has a topic, and you have partitions for that topic. Um, within that, messages are produced to, and they've got their offset. So that's that conception for partitionings. But when we're talking about storing in S3 and partitioning strategies there, what do we really mean and what are we talking about? And so when you look at an S3 bucket link, the URL here, um, there's three main components that decide what data is stored and where it is stored. Um, and it's important to keep this in mind when you're running specific read workloads. So you can decide a specific partitioning structure that matches your workload and meets your non-functional requirements. So we've got our S3 bucket, a unique ID representing essentially that object store. Within that, we have subfolders or subpaths for that S3 bucket. Essentially on your computer, when you have a folder and then a subdirectory, that's what we're talking about here. And then the last part of that S3 object link will be the actual data file. And that will be the storage format, so Avro Parquet, and then actually that file name representing the data stored. So this is what we're talking about when we mention S3 partitioning strategies, is how do you decide which subfolders are you placing these data files into? And what's a good strategy depending on whatever workload you're trying to uh, fulfill? And so deciding your partitioning strategies is of course workload dependent. What options do you have when you're using our lenses S3 sync connector as far as partitioning strategies? And how can I be sure that the workload I have in mind matches my partitioning strategy? Four specific partitioning strategies that we'll be talking about today, along with their complementary use cases or workloads. The, the first being the like for Kafka topic partitioning strategy. So we have our topic name, which is essentially a database table. This is where we're storing information about customers, let's say. And then within that table, we have specific columns, which would be our, our data fields. And within those, we have, we're storing those fields as a partition. So we've got our topic, partition zero, one, two, X. And then based off that partition, we're storing that actual offset message data. So we've got our customer's topic, partition zero, and then offset nine, two, three, three, four, five. 
So this is an ideal partitioning strategy when you're using S3 as your backup or restore of your Kafka actual data. So this would be good if you're trying to reduce the actual storage requirement on your Kafka broker, or you're backing up for a DR, HA use case, or you're using S3 as your intermediary or promoting data to an additional higher level or geo-replicating across multiple Kafka clusters. So if you're looking to retain the exact messaging and format and ordering that is exists in Kafka, that's gonna be the partitioning strategy you use for S3. We also have the ability with our connector to label a data field as this is what I'm partitioning by. So if our topic has specific geolocation information like country and city, and we want to partition our S3 bucket, by those data fields, then we can label those data fields as what we're partitioning by, and we'll create those subpath folders depending on that value, which is a great strategy for when you want your partitions to match groupings based on your analytics. So if you wanted to do analytics by country, this would be a, a good partitioning strategy because all of your associated data and messages that are associated with France will be stored in that subpath. We also have the ability to do wall clock partitioning. So taking a date time field, either as the, the Kafka event message metadata, that timestamp there, or a message data field within that Kafka message. So here it would be partitioning based on that timestamp. So year, month, day, and then even down to hour and minute as well, which is great for time series based analytics, obviously, because we're sorting based on those times that those messages were produced or that event occurred upstream. Additionally, we have hive style partitioning as well. So similar to the key header value where we're labeling a specific data field or column as the value that we're going to partition by, we still do that, but then we include the actual header value as well. So it looks like a key value pair there in your folder subpath, which is uh, native to specific analytic platforms. Uh, and optimize for those platforms as well. So some platforms have this as a requirement. Otherwise, it's just that much more uh, performant if you use this structure. So platforms like Athena or Spark, this would be the, the partitioning style that you would use for those workloads. And if there's any questions about anything I talk about, feel free to chime in chat, raise your hand, let us know. We're happy to oblige. So we've got our, our partitioning strategy all sorted out. We know what our, our workload is, and we ensure that that's complementary. What are some other factors we should consider when we're syncing from Kafka to S3? Once is to ensure exactly once semantics. So we've taken special consideration in developing this source and sync connectors to ensure that these are atomic rights to S3, that we're retaining the offset both in S3, but then also writing that back to Kafka at the appropriate time once we've assured that we've written that bucket to S3. And the way we do that is by creating a temporary go-ahead file. We write that at the connector before pushing to S3 or flushing to S3. And you can configure your connector to decide what variables and metrics determine a flushing pattern. So that could be based on the size of the temporary file. Once we hit one megabyte, go ahead and push that to S3 and then record the offset. Or it could be time-based. If there is a temporary file that is being written to for more than 10 minutes, that's going to go ahead and trigger, that, trigger the connector to write that to S3 and record that consumer offset. Another thing to consider is the actual serialization format. So what is the actual file going to be serialized as? What is it going to be stored as? Is it just going to be binary? Are we going to have byte code representing the actual underlying message data? Or are we going to store it as Parquet, usually a bit more friendlier? It's column store for analytical workloads. Or maybe you've got an application that needs to read JSON. We can oblige with all of that, supporting Avro, Parquet, JSON, CSV, text, and bytes. So keeping in mind whatever um, your workload requirements are, uh, you want to make sure you're choosing a sync connector that can meet those requirements and store that in the format that's the easiest to work for your teams. So we're going to demo the S3 sync connector today with three specific configurations showing you how we can assist with these separate workloads. We'll start off with a standard partitioning, so keeping with Kafka's partitioning structure and storing that as our subpath strategy in S3. We'll also demonstrate the hive style partitioning, keeping that key value pairs as your subfolders name, and then demonstrate as well wall clock partitioning too. Um, and with that, 
I'll hand it over to Matthias. Matthias, thanks for joining and excited to see the demo. Thanks, Adam, for the amazing explanation. Let me see if we can share my screen. Okay, I think now we're good. Okay, now we're good. Uh, thanks, everyone. It should be in the session. And first of all, I hope the demo uh, works okay because every time that we do live, I've been, been doing lives for the past four years in Brazil. So we do every week, but then when we show, everything crashes. Uh, it's normal for every demonstration that we want to do. I hope nothing happens because I've been testing since morning. So I think everything's going to go, go well. First of all, let's understand our environment. And I have these lenses, this beautiful Y. Then I have this topic called orders. An application is dumping data about orders and sales for our customers. So if you go here, let's go to table because it's, I think it's more friendly. We have information of metadata. We have the key. We have the values of that data. We have payment, everything that's composed an order. So I'm going to ingest a little more data for us to see. If I go to metrics, I have it. 38,000 events on this Kafka topic. But my data team want to have this data. If they have zero knowledge of how create consumers, how they're going to access the data from Kafka, they want batching. They want to do everything historical. So the easiest thing is I have this Kafka Connect tab on Lenses. They have all the connects. If I want to create a new one, it's pretty easy. I can create a new one is using the Kafka Connect that I have in my environment. It's not embedding the tool, but it uses mine as for management. I can create whatever I want, whatever connectors are available, actually. But let's go to the ones that we start to see and, and see. I, I told about the, we test all the time in our ECR red dot. Again, I test it all the time, never happened. But let's go to the simplest one. The simplest one is this. Let me give it a zoom. This one is working. So I have the class of my connector, the topic I want to sync, the mass of tasks that I want to use, the credentials. Please don't use my credentials. This is only for temporary access, only for the demonstration. So they're going to be removed after this video. Uh, and this important one that I want to highlight today. I think I was, when I start to talk to the, learn about lenses, to understand about lenses, one of the things that I, I, I found that's unique on the lenses way of the stream reactor project, this open source project, the lenses maintain, is to have this Kafka Connect SQL. For me, the most easy language to work with is SQL. I've been working with data for the past 12 years, so SQL is like easy for everyone. If I can show to my wife a SQL statement, she's going to understand because it's readable, it's human readable. So the same idea as the Cafe Connect. You can insert the bucket, easy as pie, select store. Okay, this I want all the data that has inside orders. I store as JSON. I use JSON because it's more the common format of data. Most of developers want to use JSON. So I'm more using to see the market people using JSON. I can use the serializer that I want to use. For example, I'm using, like I say, JSON as a value and a string for my key. If I have a key on my key value topic and the region, okay, important. This is the simplest one. It's like I'm taking to the full one. What's going to happen is this. If I go to, let's, OWS, topics, stream. So this is my... For the rest, bucket, stream, orders is the topic that I'm thinking. I have what Adam says is the default partitioning of Kafka. So I have I'm using here nine partitions. So I have nine folders. Each folder I have data in JSON format based on the topic that I think. The simplest one, easy. Most of people use this one, but then. The data team come back to me and say, okay, we don't want to do this way. It's not good. It's not to have a performance that I want. So let's try the second option. The second option is a hive style naming. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm adding the same statement. I'm partitioned by ID. 
now I'm partitioned by the order that's happening and I'm enabled this property to enable the hive style uh, naming if I want to use Athena, if I want to use Presto, if I want to use Trino to querying data from my data lake. So the rest is pretty much the same. I enable this and look what happened. Okay, let's go back. Now I have the hive. Just for the sake of the example, I know it's not a hive. Now the folders has the ID in the ID code of each topic. So he's gonna read the topic, he's gonna name all the folders of this. So every time that has the same ID, he's gonna go to the same folder. Good, but again, they go back or say, okay, Matthias, it's not good enough. It's not what we want. It's good, but it's better than the other, but it's still not good enough. So they want some complex. Let's add some complexity that's happening in the real world. That is the SMTs. SMTs for those who don't know, the simple message transformation. This is, again, it's simple, must be simple. I want to convert in-flight data. I want to add a field in-flight data. So I have these simple transformations embedded in Kafka Connect. So if you want to use the same as I want, I'm using here, that I'm gonna explain, we have this GitHub of lenses, the Kafka Connect SMT. You have to download the jar. You have to install on your Kafka Connect cluster. You have all the information here how to do it. Easy and simple as possible. So now we can start bringing, like incrementing the play that we have been doing. So before I explain the SQL, I'm going to explain the transformation first because I'm using fields, then I'm bringing on transformation. So I'm using in this one, I'm using, uh, where is the, okay, transforms here. I'm using four times of transformation. I'm using the format. I'm building a, a field on my message to know when this message was processed. I'm extracting the wall clock of the system based on year, month, day, and hour. What I'm doing is I'm using this type of SMT to create this a field on the topic that has year and has month and has day and has hour. Why I'm doing this? Because in the end of the day, I'm going to use this in my KSQL language. Again, insert into my bucket, star partition by, and that comes the, the beauty of everything, how flexible it is. So I'm partitioned by header because wall clock, in this case, I'm using the header is more lightweight. I use the header of year, then month, then day, then hour. So it's running. I have 30, 39,000. Let's make more 1,000 into this one, just for us to have more data inside of this topic. So far, I think we don't have any questions. But if we have, just let me know and I can stop, I can explain. Okay, the 1000 rows just to get inserted in Kafka and just publish in my top, in my S3. So if I go now to my topic, my OWS topic, my, what is, what is the one that is timestamp? Now I have the whole clock year, month, day, and hour. So I have data here based on hour. I have data in the, all the other folders. Good. So the guys say, okay, that's what we want. I'm going to show an easy Spark code just for us to see how we can leverage this. So the whole idea is I have all data, all this has been synced into Kafka. I have this simple Databricks notebook that's going to access my, my topic. It's going to start to make a few transformations, easy transformations. The first one is read from data set. I'm going to run. Let's hope not. Again, let's hope everything does the crash. I think not because this one I test like the whole morning. You're not supposed to have any problems. It has, I think it always gets five minutes to close off. But I'm pushing all, I'm reading. That's the beauty. I really like the two technologies I really enjoy to work is Kafka and Spark. I think they are a match made in heaven because I love streaming, but the, the processing part of Spark is amazing. So I can bring all the JSON files that I have on my bucket 
push into a data set, now it's in memory, and now I'm showing the content. So it's the content that I have in my topic. But then I want to use Delta. That is not, this is the Delta one. So I'm bringing to Delta. Delta Lake, Delta Lake is a, is a data format for Lake House. I'm not gonna enter to delve into this because it's not the main uh, objective of this of the session. But if you want to know more, you can ping me on LinkedIn. I'm, I love to talk about it, everything about data. So this is one of the things. So I'm writing Delta format that's really analytical. Is the join of Delta Lake in Lake in that warehouse merged together using a simple file format? So I'm bringing this, and now I can query the best of the data. So I test it out. I have my topic on S3, and now my data teams are happy. Any questions? Because I don't want to delve too much on this, Adam. If you want to pick it up, I think because I when I stop when I start talking, I never stop. So I'm trying to not enter too much on this. Any questions so far? Can you push? Yeah, actually, that's an amazing question. Guillaume, Guillaume asked if we can push directly to Delta. Today we don't have in the market any connect of the Delta Lake House architecture so far. But I know in our talks. That's in the roadmap of lenses in the stream reactor for us to have the Delta Lake house connector. So be prepared for using this because, like I say, imagine if I could just jump in this part to read JSON, to create my Delta table, to go straight to the Delta Lake, to the Delta Lake table. Is for me something that I see in the database is gonna be amazing for a lot of data engineers, data architects, and data analysts. So far, we don't, but coming soon, I, I believe we're gonna gonna have this soon. Adam, I think that's close my part. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matthias, and that's a great segue. So we've demonstrated the flexibility of our S3 sync connector. Last week, we showed the flexibility of the source connector as well. So sourcing complex data from S3 into Kafka. So showing the full life cycle and complementary connectors there. And then the, the comment about Delta Lake is a great segue into the discussion about the connectors we're currently working on. So we're partnering with some of our largest customers to meet their data integration needs with open source Apache 2 licensed Kafka connectors. So we have a wide variety of connectors available today in our Stream Reactor repo, which we build into our developer experience platform, make it really easy to drag and drop and deploy new connectors and manage their full life cycle, including auto connector restarts. But we're working on a lot more and custom features for the connectors that we do have in place. So if there is a specific data source system outside of Kafka you're looking to integrate to, or a specific partitioning strategy, something that isn't in the market today and not open source, definitely let us know. We're happy to partner with you on that endeavor. Definitely join our community as well. We have an active forum where you can interface with the broader team on our community Slack, as well as our Stack Overflow called Ask Marios. You can ask questions there and get an answer from our core development and engineering teams. But thank you so much for joining. Be sure to tune in next Thursday where we're talking about dead letter queues, the ins and outs of working with them using our take on SQL stream processing. And we'll be live there to answer all of your remaining questions too. With that, thank you so much. If there's any remaining questions, please feel free to chime in either in the chat or out loud. I'm happy to address them before we all go about our days and get ready for the weekends and holidays coming up. And if there aren't any questions, then we are under the assumption that we did the perfect job and explained everything perfectly. Uh, but that said, if there's anything we didn't cover, Feel free to chime in either now or later on community Slack. Again, you can access the, the full team, including myself there.